When I did my first Foxtrot mic FM15 uh, video, a lot of people were wondering like, when is a pistol, when's a pistol coming? And I felt so bad. I even gave you guys a little bit of an Easter egg because when I was talking about the barrel in that one, I showed you this barrel because they sent some spare parts. So that was kind of the tease. This is a 12 and a half inch barrel. And lo and behold, look what we got here, a 12 and a half inch upper that uh, I have on one of my SBR lowers. But yeah, so the Foxtrot mic FM15 12 and a half inch upper is here. I got this one from my friends at Rainier because they, oops, the barrel's rolling away. They knew uh, how much I liked the other FM15 and they, uh, I told them, I said, I think that would be really fun. And it just so happened I had a uh, spare SBR lower laying around. I mean, you guys probably have a few of those lowers laying around too, right? I think I actually got another one on the bench over there from another project. But anyways, uh, I was just like, yes, I'm not going to do the pistol thing. I want to do the SBR thing because I think that would be awesome. Now, I really do like 12 and a half inch as a barrel length on SBRs because it's a good general do all right in the middle, like the Goldilocks. Not too big, not too small, but in some ways just right, you know? And I really liked a lot of the innovation that was going on with Foxtrot Mike with their upper that I was really happy to see this one. Now, right up front, this was sent to me as a demo, uh, but it's so fun, I kind of don't want to give it back, so I'm not sure if I have to or not. But a lot of really cool things going on. It has their unique proprietary upper receiver, which means that the carrier uh, travels within the upper receiver, thus no buffer tube and no traditional charging handle. So what's cool about that is you can have a folding stock like I have this old, uh, this is a SIG MPX stock, uh, but I'll show you guys in a little bit. The This is a Midwest Industries uh, stock tube adapter folding mechanism. This will fit on there just fine. So basically, once you have your receiver set up, you can put any folding brace or stock depending on your type, but this just unfolds. Now, the cool thing is you can shoot it like this as well. So if you're looking for that truck gun, their backpack gun or whatever, you can shoot it just like so. Now. What I really liked about it overall is number one, 12 and a half inches is cool. Being able to shoot it from folded is cool. And then obviously with this particular stock, it unfolds and you know you can engage. Uh, but it was just, it was fun to shoot. Uh, it ran reliably. I did have one issue that I'll talk about that was the lower's fault, not the upper's fault, but I'm really glad I got it figured out because I was a little nervous at first. But a lot of cool stuff going on. So let's start. Um, Talking about pricing and availability, I'll just get that right out of the way. This particular one is a Rainier exclusive, so you can get it from our friends at Rainier Arms. I'll post a link to the article in the description below where you can learn all about that stuff. MSRP is right around six and a half, so 650, but there is some sales and exclusive pricing right now. So if you wanted to hop on one of these, you'll save yourself a little bit of cash. Now, some specs, 12 and a half inch upper, uh, 11 and three quarter M-lock rail, and then we're gonna get into some of the under the hood stuff right now, but as of when you're watching this, you can order this. And this would be great for, like I said, if you have that SBR lower or maybe a pistol build that you're looking on or something like that, uh, definitely a lot of options there. Here's what I really liked about Foxtrot Mike right off the bat was the machining quality was really nicely done. Uh, I didn't see any you know, machining marks or any sloppy you know, stuff or whatever, and it fit my lower pretty well. There's a little bit of uh, wiggle, but it could be the lower, it could be the upper, they could get oversized pins, whatever, no big deal, but I didn't notice anything uh, out of line or anything like that. But the lines on how the rail interfaces with the upper, I really did admire on the first one, and I really liked that it does have the anti-rotation tab on the top. So this is a really rigid upper receiver, how it interfaces with the rail. Now, at first glance, a lot of people are asking, where was the buffer tube? Well, everything's all contained. It uses this little carrier. We'll take a closer look under the hood here in just a second. Now, as far as charging it is this non-reciprocating forward charging handle. Now you can reverse this. I could put it on either side, just like I could with the full-size rifle. Uh, I like to have it on the left. That way, as a right-handed shooter, I can keep my right hand on fire control. My left hand can manipulate the charging handle. And again, it's non-reciprocating, so as you're shooting, it doesn't move. However, I did notice that there was a couple times when I was shooting off a barricade that if the charging handle were to get pressed, that would cause the carrier to come out of battery. And obviously we know what happens when guns are out of battery, they won't fire. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, if you are gonna be doing any barricade work, just keep an eye on the charging handle, make sure it doesn't push the belt carrier out of battery. 
Moving forward, we do have a three position adjustable gas block, one, two, and three. And I did find that three was over gassed. So that's kind of their like adverse, really crappy ammo setting. So once I had it on two, non-suppressed, it fired just fine. All right, so this should be setting two, should lock back. And gas. Uh, and then for suppressed, I had turned it down to one. Now, would I like to see a little bit more fine tuning? Maybe, but you know what? It works. And when I put a suppressor on it and I turned it down to one, it worked just fine. Now it is kind of a smaller knob. Uh, so a little trick that I learned is to use a tip of a bullet and then you can go ahead and insert that in there to make the gas block adjustment. The only thing I swapped right off the bat was it did come with a standard A2 muzzle device and I swapped that right away for a suppressor mount so I, I could shoot this gun suppressed. The suppressor I was using was a Dead Air Sandman S, but uh, I, Honestly, I think any suppressor would work just fine and you can reduce the gas, which is really cool. Let's take a look under the hood. I got some spare parts and I wanted to kind of show you some of the innovation that I really liked from Foxtrot Mike. Now, this is the barrel. This is a 12 and a half inch barrel. Their barrels are really, really nice barrels. When I was sighting in uh, my upper with an LPVO, uh, I threw a one to six on it for a little bit. My groups with just crappy 55 grain full metal jacket were hovering right around an inch to inch and just under inch and a half, give or take. And again, I really wasn't trying to get super accurate. I was just trying to zero the LPVO. Uh, but I was really surprised when a couple of the groups were, you know, right at an inch or even just a, a shade under an inch. And again, that's just with a one to six, just off the prone. So I thought it was shooting just fine with just bulk ammo. Uh, if I hang on to this for more long term, I kind of want to do a little bit more, maybe push it to some distance and try some higher quality ammo. But the barrel is really well done. And starting with the back, what I really like is forward of the barrel extension is we do have this engagement surface here, which is different than your traditional AR. You'll notice it has these nice flats on here. So if you ever, you know, did need to use uh, to hold it while you're working on something, if you had a stubborn muzzle device or whatever it might be, uh, you'd have some options there. But what's really cool is this taper right here. And then you have their big beefy barrel nut. I mean, look at that thing. That thing's huge. It looks like a huge socket, you know, that you would see in a like a diesel mechanics tool chest. But what's really great is inside, and I know it's super tough to see on camera, but believe it or not, inside here, there is a taper surface. And that taper surface matches with this taper surface. Now, the cool thing with tapers is in the machining world is, they are self-centering, so it helps things center and align, but also we're getting more fit. We're getting more of an interference fit versus just a shoulder. Now we're getting more of a taper. So we have more engagement surface for this barrel nut to engage uh, with the, the barrel. So then as we tighten all this together, we get a really solid clamping you know, surface going on inside with those tapers. This then attaches to the upper receiver. The rail attaches to this big, beefy, barrel nut, so it, it's a really rigid upper receiver. Now moving forward on the barrel, one of the other things I really liked was the gas block. Now what's cool is, again, we have flats up here, so again, if I had to work with a really stubborn muzzle device or something like that, I do have uh, a place to hold it. But you can see here that the gas block is pinned and it does have a machine flat into the barrel that engages with this tab on the gas block. So. As everything kind of comes together, this tab and that flat prevents rotation. And then we also have the pins of the gas block. So this arguably is probably one of the best and most secure ways to mount a gas block I've ever seen on a factory gun. So kudos to FM uh, Foxtrot Mike for making this because like I said, legit, this is probably the most robust gas block attachment I've ever seen. That's pretty awesome. So that's really cool. Moving back, I want to talk a little bit about the carrier and what kind of is so magical with that is that we have this shortened carrier. It does use a standard AR bolt and they are magnetic particle inspected, but then we have this small carrier with a unique key that interfaces with that charging handle. And uh, staking is pretty solid. That short key cycles within the upper receiver. So again, we don't need a buffer tube or anything like that. Now, is this a proprietary part? Yep, it sure is. But Foxtrot Mike does have spare parts available if you were to ever need that, uh, such as the key. But the bolt, the uh, screws, you know, the internals are standard AR. It's just a different, I believe it's a different cam and obviously a different key. Uh, and then the carrier itself, but uh, for spare parts like, you know, gas rings and extractor and uh, firing pin and stuff like that, that's, you know, standard AR, which is nice for field repairs or maintenance or whatever it might be. So I, I liked all of that. Now, moving back to the 
upper itself, again, uh, it, it's really cool how it works with the folding mechanism. So you take your lower, you can buy lowers from Fox Rap Mike, but if you have a lower already and you want to get that, comes with a rear Picatinny adapter, which is this guy. Now, installation is pretty straightforward. And again, what I like is that the Rainier version gives you this aluminum uh, Picatinny adapter. And then we have this insert here, and it is actually reverse threaded. So I actually kind of put everything together. Uh, it kind of tightens up. And what's really cool is the only tool needed is just a socket extension, a 3 8 socket extension. And we simply put this in our upper, we tighten it up, it sandwiches everything together, and now we have this Picatinny rail on the back that we can attach our stock or brace to. Other cool thing is we have this little set screw right here that allows us to uh, access the rear detent and spring for the takedown pin. So I don't have to worry about like, you know, hiding the plate behind there, put that in after, put that little set screw in. I put a little Loctite 222 on there because I hate small screws coming loose. And uh, then I was able to do that. And then what you're left with is that Picatinny rail on the back of your receiver. Again, this is an old SIG MPX stock. When I made the teaser video, a lot of people were asking about which stock this is, and I don't think this is available anymore. So uh, for what's available now is you can get this Midwest Industries stock tube adapter with their folding mechanism. And you simply, you know, clamp it onto the Picatinny rail, torque it down. Now, normally I would use thread locker, uh, you know, proper installation, but then you have a nice, you know, stock here, and then this just folds and comes out. So this is a comfortable low profile stock. It has a nice curve, so it's pretty comfortable. Uh, on your cheek as well, but this low profile stock is available and it's pretty nice. So this is pretty minimalistic, lightweight, has a QD socket. Uh, you know, it's just a nice lightweight folding stock to kind of go with, you know, this more compact style. So that's something I would definitely check out if you're looking for an SBR stock is that one from my friends over at Midwest Industries. So that is that, but gotta say, this was a really fun upper to shoot. And this is really an SBR that I enjoyed. The issue that I was having, uh, my bolt catch was raising slightly, causing it to drag on the carrier, causing some stoppages. And at first I was like, what is going on? And then I figured it out what was going on. So my bolt catch on my lower receiver was the Geisley Maritime. And as you can see, I'm gonna try to zoom in. Uh, this one has been modified. Normally the Maritime catch gets, has this little hook that kind of extends out a little bit more. It's uh, more like a hook shape, if you will. Well, you can see by that little mark on the upper where that bare aluminum is, it was actually hitting the receiver right there, causing the uh, bolt catch to grab on just slightly. And when that was happening, it was causing the inside to rise a little bit, causing the carrier to drag on the catch. So sometimes it would lock back prematurely. Sometimes it would just kind of slow the action. And once I figured that, once I held the catch in place, it ran just fine. And then ultimately what I had to do for this is I just trimmed that hook off of the Geisley uh, Maritime bolt catch. So that way it doesn't hang up on the receiver. So that is one thing to keep in mind, even though this receiver pocket is very generously machined, you know, to account for some of the larger bolt catches, the Geisley, and I do like the Geisley, don't get me wrong. Uh, I like a lot of the nice bolt catches out there, but the Geisley is what was giving me some issues. So that was not a fault of the upper. And once I got that fixed and figured out, the gun ran just fine. Now, as far as uh, quick testing, I just shot XM193. Just, it was cheap practice, 55 grain ball ammo. But once I got that bolt catch issue figured out, the thing ran just fine, suppressed and unsuppressed. All right, I think that kind of covers it. Uh, I know this was kind of a quicker first look video, but I wanted to get something out while this product is hot. Uh, I'm gonna keep shooting this and I'll probably do a check-in later on both the 16 inch version and this one, just to kind of give you guys an update. So please let me know if you have specific questions about the Foxtrot mic products. Go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below, or if you have any questions about that or anything else firearms related, email me. The email address shown below is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. At the end of the month, we have a live stream where we have our QA episode where I give away a prize and it is a great chance for us to interact. And like I said, we give away stuff. So make sure you email your questions. And then if you haven't subscribed yet, if you're still watching, we just hit 90,000 ish subscribers. We're on our way to 100. We're going to have a big giveaway, a shop tour video. We're giving away tons of cool stuff at the 100 K mark. So please tell everybody to subscribe and uh, we're going to have more information on how to enter. But basically 
enter by going to the webpage, signing up for our email list. We're gonna draw our winners from our email list. That's the best way for you to enter. The even better way, I guess that really wasn't the best way. The other way to enter is to support us on Patreon. Our Patreon members get extra entries into the 100K giveaway, and you can support us on Patreon. We do really appreciate all of the support. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a great day.